What's up everyone, it's Q and unfortunately I'm back with a little bit of disappointment. So you may be asking what that disappointment is. Well, Dead Rising 4, the latest game in the Dead Rising series, launched just a few days ago. It launched on Tuesday Just Gone for Xbox One. It'll be out in 90 days or so on PC and it will be out this time next year on PS4. But it's the latest entry in the series from Capcom since 2013, November 2013, when Dead Rising 3 came out on Xbox One as a launch title. Sure, it came to PC a little bit later, and then they remastered, well, if you want to call it a remaster, they ported slash remastered Dead Rising 1, 2, and off the record for PC and modern consoles. Well, they only brought one over to PC because two and off the record were already there at better than what the consoles play them at now. But anyway, that's beside the point. So, yeah, Dead Rising 4, it's developed by what are now called Capcom Vancouver, which are originally Blue Tower Games. And Blue Tower Games, if you're not familiar with them, actually made Dead Rising 2. So, they made Dead Rising 2... They were bought out by Capcom and then they were rebranded as Capcom Vancouver and then they made Dead Rising 3 and now Dead Rising 4. So, unfortunately, Dead Rising 4 is a bit of a letdown. So, I am a huge, huge fan of Dead Rising. Dead Rising 1 and 2, as well as Case West and Case Zero to an extent, are absolutely amazing games. There's so much to like about them. There's there's very few things to dislike about them. They're just so much fun. They're so enjoyable. They've got such great characters and a great atmosphere and great attitude. And they're just they're fantastic games. I absolutely love them. Dead Rising 3, not so much. Okay, it wasn't a bad game. It was still pretty decent. Personally, I still prefer... I know they tried to keep the whole wacky, zany style and all as well, but... Personally, I don't think it comes across as well with the modern, gritty, realistic-looking graphics that they go for versus the kind of cartoony, bright, and colorful from Dead Rising 1 and 2. So, Dead Rising 4 obviously continues on in the same style as Dead Rising 3. It's a bit more bright because it is set in... It's set at... um at Christmas time, so it's a little bit more bright and colorful, but it still retains the, the graphical style of Dead Rising 3. Now... For those of you who don't remember, Dead Rising 3 launched in a bit of a sorry state on Xbox One. I was going to say Xbox 360 for a second. It launched in a bit of a sorry state back a couple of years ago on Xbox One. It was eventually patched and fixed and all, but there was a significant amount of problems with it as as the development cycle went on. Well, not the development cycle, post-launch, I should say, including almost every DLC being broken or heavily bugged in some way. I know personally it affected me because the final DLC, the fourth one I believe, well it, not the fourth one, the final DLC of the season pass, which was the fourth DLC. They did eventually release a fifth DLC much later on. It wasn't covered in the season pass. But the the fourth one it particularly screwed me out of an achievement. And the way I would have to go roundabout and get that achievement now is just a significant amount of time that I'm not willing to put into it. So, because of all of that kind of stuff, there's a lot of problems with Dead Rising 3, yet it's the same developers on the same platform, three years later, and the game Dead Rising 4 is also in a very sorry state. Now, this is a game, okay, this is a game that had an 11 gig update, I bought it on the Tuesday, I installed it on the Tuesday, and it had an 11 gig update. So that's an 11 gig day one patch, okay? And the game was still in pretty bad shape. The controls can be all over the place, the actual, the physics are just janky as fuck. I've had plenty of times where I have say I've thrown something at a zombie, or a thrown, perfect example is when you're in the exosuit, you can pick up and throw zombies sometimes. I've thrown zombies in straight lines. They will hit other zombies. And those zombies, instead of flying back, will fly towards me. I've seen regular, normal zombies just shambling down the road. They literally walk into a car and that car does a, like a handstand vertical flip 20 feet in the air. Uh, there's tons of 
tons of crazy crap like that going on. But some of the bigger ones that, that have really, really gotten to me and that kind of, I mean, when you look at physics and things like that, they can be always a bit questionable. They're very hard to get right and it's usually not perfect. Some of the big issues I've had were in Dead Rising 4, for example. Now, I have two examples of these on video, but I kind of hesitate to include them because they're just shitty WhatsApp phone off the screen videos I just sent to my friends as I was playing. So one of the main things uh, that I've had a lot of, I, I'll say probably 20, 25 maybe of the same issue happen, and that is collision. Now, you may be wondering what I'm talking about with Collision. You may know exactly what I'm talking about. But let me give you the perfect, most blatant example. One time, I was driving down the street, Dead Rising 4, mowing down zombies. And I was in a, I was in a muscle car. And I just accidentally clipped the edge of one of the one of the broken down cars that was in the middle of the road so it kind of threw me for a loop a little bit anyway but uh, it put me on a path like i bounced off a kind of and it put me in a well what i, what I can only call basically a dead end between a wall the edge of that car and an overturned bus of course the because they were all so close together i didn't have enough time to stop and i drove straight through the bus yeah I, I literally drove straight through it. And like I said, this has happened between on foot and in vehicles 20 plus times. There's some other examples, you know, I'd be trying to hide behind something and I could be seen through it. There, I'd be trying to hide behind, and yes, I was in stealth mode. There was other times where I was, say, shooting at someone while walking and I just walked through a wall. Or I'd walk through, um, like, a little portable generator with lights on it kind of thing. Or I'd walk through some of those, like, concrete barriers that they have for, for traffic. Things like that. I mean, that can be... It can be a bit really disheartening when you see it. But I think one of the things that really annoys me and that really, really killed it for me is I'm not this won't have spoilers. I am talking about the end of the game, but I'm not gonna not gonna have any spoilers or any indication of what actually happens. For the simple reason is I don't know. Now, I'll under I'll explain exactly what I mean so you understand it. In Dead Rising 4, when I got to the final chapter, every single cutscene including the final ending, played without voice and without subtitles. Every single cutscene in the final act, the final chapter, the final final case, that's the word I'm looking for, every single cutscene, the music was playing just fine, the sound effects were playing just fine, there was no voice, yet all pretty much all the cutscenes in that particular part were all close up on characters where they were talking they were interacting between each other and i had no idea what was going on because every single cutscene and the final ending had sound effects had music had no voice whatsoever and had no uh, what was the other one had no subtitles whatsoever and i have subtitles turned on because the rest of the game had subtitles just fine and I had run across this issue a few times during the main game in the, the previous, before the end of the game style ones. And, I mean, I think it only happened during two smaller cutscenes during the rest of the game. It had happened maybe a dozen times during gameplay where I'd be going along and I'd get a phone call from one of the characters. And we'd be talking, you know, the characters would be talking, the subtitles would be there. Usually what would trigger it in in the actual gameplay versions was I'd get there'd be like an effort sound. So like you know when you, you swing it's like or you know you you get hit and you, you take damage and he makes the, the sound effect for it. That would usually cancel it out and all the subtitles would disappear instantly, even if I was only like two words into the conversation and all the dialogue would disappear as well. The the actual voice dialogue. And it just left me completely like in the loop. And I think that's fucking unacceptable. That's this is all a joke. Like if you if you ask me, how does it get out a game in twenty sixteen that's had you could argue I won't say a three year development cycle. The game was confirmed to be in development from at least early this year. So you know, there could be even less than a year in there. That reminds me actually, there's there's a, a good amount of stuff 
around the city. Uh, I'm not even going to get into the quality of the game or anything like that. But there's a good amount of stuff in the actual city itself that feels like it's just the, the actual stores, like the even the individual layout in them, or even some of the larger areas. I found an, uh, an almost an entire city block that's just copy and pasted from Dead Rising 3, and basically nothing has changed in it. So that's kind of dodgy in itself right there. So it kind of does scream unfinished, half ass rushed game. Because at the same time, when I see all the problems with this, it doesn't scream to me that this game is a sequel to a game from three years ago. It screams to me that this game has a max of one year development time, was rushed out just to make its launch window, launch date, whatever you want to call it. And if you had told me that this was like a, a failed spin-off or something, I'd well believe it. Um, that's I just I'd well believe it. Uh, it seems like something that Ubisoft would have launched any time to do with any of their series. Like, hey, here's Assassin's Creed 2, and then a year later, hey, here's Assassin's Creed 2 Brotherhood. It's basically exactly the same, with all the same problems, and it's not as good. So, yeah, unfortunately, Dead Rising 4 really turned me off. The game also isn't that great, to be honest. It's it's uh, It loses a lot of what Dead Rising is, if you ask me. But I'm not going to get into all that stuff on it. Because then it would turn into like some sort of pseudo review. But yeah, it, it's really annoying. A game that had an 11 gig day one patch. Because I bought it on disc. I buy almost all my games on disc. So, you know, I put it in, installed it, 11 gig update, and I still get all these problems. And you can argue it's every game has problems. These are pretty big problems. And we shouldn't accept games having prob problems in general, let alone big problems like this. So... It's really unfortunate. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it gets patched and fixed. But to be honest, I can't see myself going back to Dead Rising 4. I'll be playing more Dead Rising 1 and 2. Definitely, maybe some 3, I don't know. But uh, I think it'll be a long time before I return to Dead Rising 4. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully, a lot of these issues are patched out within 90 days. Because that's when the PC copy comes out. So any of you PC guys who are just waiting for it to come to PC before you buy it. Hopefully this all gets ironed out, or a lot of it gets ironed out for you. And to the PlayStation 4 users who will probably buy this a year from now, I'm sure a year from now this will all be smoothed over and hopefully your version will be fine. So, that's all I know. Uh, let me know if you've played Dead Rising 4, if you love the series, or whatever. Uh, specifically, if you've had any issues with Dead Rising 4, if you've had big, broken, massive hunk of junks, or... If you've just had like kind of little minor issues, is, is it just me somehow? I don't know. Let me know all that anyway in the comment section below. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter, details in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the rest of the videos in my channel.